Hey everyone, and welcome to another Crusader Kings 3 modding lesson on the Iron Workshop. In this lesson, we'll learn how to create new traits in Crusader Kings 3. So let's roll the intro and get to it. In order to create a new trait in Crusader Kings 3, we will need to follow these six steps. And we'll start with creating a new mod. Now, if you already have a mod and you just want to put the new traits into the existing mod, you can skip to step number two. But for the rest of you, we'll need to open the Crusader Kings 3 launcher, go to mods, mod tools, create mod. And in here, we'll give a name to our new mod. I'll just call it the new character traits mod this is the version of our mod and this is the folder that will hold all of our files and we'll just assign a tag to it excellent so now our mod has been created and it has been automatically activated by the game and we can proceed to step number two now in order for our new trait to work we will need to create the folder and file structure so to do that, first of all, open your CK3 mod folder that will be located in Documents, Paradox Interactive, Crusader Kings 3 mod. And alongside that, please open the vanilla, the original game folder as well, which is located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Crusader Kings 3 game. Excellent. Now we will be copying some files and folders. So the first folder that we need is the common folder. So I will just create that in my mod. In here we have a folder called traits. So let's create that inside of the common folder. Inside of traits we have this file called 00 traits. So let's just copy this file over to our mod and change its name to new traits. You can give it a unique name of your own. New traits is just the name that I chose for the purpose of this lesson. Now let's go back to the first folder of our mod and we'll do the same in Crusader Kings 3, making sure that we are in the game folder. Now the next folder we will need is the GFX folder. Inside of that we have a folder called interface, so let's create that as well. And inside of that we have a folder called icons, so let's create icons. And inside of that we have another folder called traits, so we will need this folder. And I'm just going to copy uh, one of these icons. It doesn't really matter which icon. I am mostly taking the icon for its size and to have something to open in paint.net. Excellent. So now that we have that, let's again go back to our first folders like that. And the next folder we will be creating is the history folder. And from the history folder, we will need the characters folder. So let's just create that. And from here, we will need uh, the file of the character that we are going to be assigning our trait to. So I'm going to grab the Irish file from here. But if your character is different, then you may want to grab a different file. When we get to step number six, I will show you exactly how you can find your character and find the relevant file to copy in this step. If you're just practicing, then you may want to take the Irish file as well. The next folder we need is the localization folder. So let's just create that folder as well. And in the localization folder, I'm going to search for the traits file. This is the English traits file and you can right click, go to open file location and you see that inside the localization folder there is a folder called English. So we will create that one. And I'm just going to copy this file over here 
and we'll just call it the new trades localization underscore l underscore english this is very important that you get this right otherwise your localization will not work you have to include underscore l underscore english in order for it to be shown correctly obviously it doesn't have to be english if your language is different all right so these are all the folders and files that we need from the base game and we can now proceed to step number three in this step we'll be creating the entry for our trait so let's open our mod folder go to common traits new traits and let's open this file and in this file we have all the traits from the base game in this file you'll find all the traits that exist in the game and there are different types of traits so it's very important that you understand which trait you want to add for example we have education traits we have childhood traits that actually go away once your character is grown up we also have health traits these traits are specifically to change the health of your character so once you've decided what kind of trait you want to add it's best to copy an existing entry of the same category of trait but for the purpose of this lesson i'm going to keep this quite simple i'm just going to take the brave trait i'm going to search for it in here So I'm going to take the brave trait and I'm just going to change it to something else. Now I want to copy this whole trait entry. Now the entry starts here with this opening bracket. And if I were to scroll down, I see that it closes here with this closing bracket. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this whole section by holding the shift key on my keyboard. Now I'm going to cut. I'm going to press Ctrl plus A on my keyboard, then delete to remove everything else from this file, and now paste to paste the Brave trait on its own. Excellent. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the Brave trait to something else. For example, I'm just going to call it Spongy. Okay, now as you all know, I'm a big fan of Spongebob. So the spongy trait is something that I can definitely work with. Now these traits actually have quite a bit of complexity to them and they have a lot of settings that you can put in each trait. One of the best ways to learn about it is to experiment and try to put different things from different traits and see how they work in the game. I will not be going over all of these settings. First of all, because it is not really possible to cover everything. And also in the original game folder, in the original common traits folder, you have a file here called traits.info. And you can actually drag that file into Notepad++. And in here you'll have quite a bit of explanations about what most of these parameters do. So you can adjust your trait to be exactly how you want it to be in the game. This video is only meant to show you how to create a new one, but modifying the trait and giving it personality is entirely up to you. All right, so we have our spongy trait. I'm not really going to change anything in here. I'll just leave it as is, and I'm going to save it. So now the game knows that there is a trait called spongy, and we have actually completed step number three. We have created our new trait entry. Now let's proceed to step number four. Creating the trade graphics is actually very simple, not graphically, but in how you connect the graphic to the trait. So this is what I will explain in this lesson. I will not make an attempt to make some kind of beautiful graphics with our traits. So let's see what we need to do. So we have our new trait, right? We have our spongy trait. And all we need to do now is to go to the game files and tell it that graphic file X is associated with the spongy trait. So we'll go to the root folder of our mod. We'll go to the GFX folder, interface, icons, traits. And in here, the only thing that you have to do is to change the name of this file to the ID of your trait. This here, this is your ID. 
So I'm go just going to copy it like this, put it like this. And now the game knows that the file in here in this folder that's called the same as the trait is the graphic that's supposed to be associated with this trait. Excellent. Now I do want to change it a bit just so that we can see the difference in the game. So I will open paint.net and I'm just going to drag this file in here. Open. And let's just uh, do something in here so that we can see a difference in this graphic just so that we know that this is the spongy trait that we have created. Well, just give it like this, maybe like a SpongeBob face, I don't know, whatever. Once you've done your, your changes or once you've created your graphic, just go to File, Save As, select the file or create a new file. In here, make sure to select the DDS file type, Save. And in here, in the settings, make sure to select the A8, R8, G8, B8 settings, OK, and our file is ready to be used. And we've actually completed step number four. Now let's proceed to step number five. In step number five, we'll be creating the localization of our new trait. This means that we will be creating the text that the player will see associated with our trait in the game. So let's uh, take a look at our trait entry in here. It's called Spongy, but obviously I don't want the player to see it like that because if I were to call it, for example, trait Spongy, just to make sure that I know that it's a trait, then it would be weird if it was called trait Spongy. But let's see how we can create the localization for this thing. So I'll open my mod folder. We'll go to the root folder, the first folder of our mod. We'll go to localization, English. If your language is different, then obviously not English. And we'll open our new traits localization file that we copied before. And in here, we're just going to clean this file a little bit so that we don't have anything that we don't need. Let's just select everything from the beginning to the end of this file. And we'll just put our entry in here. So we'll call it spongy. Zero, quotation marks. And you can just call it spongy or maybe very spongy. It doesn't really matter. Either way, it will work. Another thing that you can put in here is a description for your trait. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can either use the description in here directly in the file, or if your description is very long, then it's best to create a localization key. This, for example, is a localization key. It tells the game to go to the relevant localization file, this file in our case, and search for the localization there. So if your localization is very short, what you can do, you can just copy this line in here and just put it like this and put your text between quotation marks like this and for example this character is very spongy but this works only if your description is very short if your description is very long then it's best to put it in a localization key for example like this spongy description and just put this text in here or whatever text you want to put and then just paste it in here like that. And then the game will know that in order to display the description for this trait, it will have to look in this file in this line. One last thing that we need to do is to add the trait prefix to the name of our trait. So in here we'll need to add trait underscore and the name of our trait. This is quite important for the game to know that this is a localization entry for a trait. You don't actually need it for the description, but you do need it for the name. All right, so now we've finished creating our trait localization and we can proceed to the next step. Now, in order to assign our new trait to a character, we will first need to locate that character in the game. The best way to do this is to start the game in debug mode 
If you don't know how to start your game in debug mode, please take a look at the video that I will have a link to in the upper right corner of the screen. So let's start our game in debug mode. Now once you have started the game, all you need to do is to locate the character that you want to assign your new trait to. Now in this case I'm going to assign my trait to this character in Ireland. But let's say that I don't know where that character is located in the game files. So let's see how I can locate him. So once I've started my game, if I were to hover my mouse over the character, you see that I have this line in pink that says debug and there is a line that says historical ID. So this is the ID number by which this character is defined in the game files. So let's see how I can find this character with this ID number. I will need to open the base game folder, go to history, characters, and just copy the path to this folder by clicking here, right clicking, copy. Then I'm going to open Notepad++, press Ctrl plus F, go to find in files, paste here in the directory the path to the characters folder, and in here just type the ID of the character and press find all. So once you have done that, you will see that there's an entry here for 8355. And now I'm going to search for this entry in the file that I have in my mod folder. So let's go there. Here it is. And just to make sure that I don't overwrite anything that I don't need to overwrite, I'm going to copy this entry. I'm going to select everything else, delete. Put this entry in here and just add the trait just by typing trait and the ID of my new trait, spongy, and saving it. That's it, now this character has the spongy trait. And after I've assigned my new trait to my character, the last thing that I want to do is to change the name of this file here in history characters because what will happen in the current situation is that it will load the Irish file and it will only have one character and that could cause some serious problems. So let's just change this file to new characters. Characters. Excellent. Now we can close this file, open it. And now all that's remaining is to test and see if our character gets our new trait. All right, as you can see, we now have the very spongy trait and it says that this character is very spongy and our trait is now in the game and that's basically all there is to it. All right, so that's all there is to creating new traits in Crusader Kings 3. If things didn't work out for you on the first try, just give it another try and I'm sure that you will succeed. If something is still not working, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to help you. If you found this lesson helpful, please leave a like or let me know in the comments. It will greatly help with the algorithm pushing this lesson upwards and letting other people find it as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video lesson or tutorial on the Iron Workshop. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. The algorithm and me will be very happy. Here are more videos I make. If you like my stuff, consider subscribing to be notified when new content is available. The Iron Workshop lives and thrives thanks to the continued support of my Patreons. If you're willing and able, you can support me on Patreon for just one buck and get access to exclusive and early content. See you around.